welcome to a video about a podcast, which is in itself an episode of that podcast. We're going meta today. Since this is the first time our podcast has made it onto our YouTube channel, let's just call this video episode zero. If you're listening to this on your favorite audio podcast site, feel free to head over to YouTube, go to the Yellowstone Wildlife Sanctuary channel, and listen to this episode there where you can get some visual elements added in. What is this podcast? The Greater Yellowstone Ecosystem is a production of the Yellowstone Wildlife Sanctuary, where each episode we explore a different facet of one of the largest nearly intact temperate zone ecosystems on Earth. You guessed it, the Greater Yellowstone Ecosystem. My name is Gary Robson. I'm the executive director of the Yellowstone Wildlife Sanctuary in Red Lodge, Montana, and I'm the host of Yellowstone Ecosystem. The podcast began back in April of 2018 as a radio segment on FM 99 The Mountain in Red Lodge, Montana. We branded it as Two Minutes in the Yellowstone Ecosystem and wrapped an intro and outro around it to release it as a podcast. Our very first episode, Return of the Sandhill Cranes, is still one of our top five episodes. Here's what it sounded like. Welcome to Two Minutes in the Yellowstone Ecosystem, sponsored by the Yellowstone Wildlife Sanctuary. Now here's your host, Gary Robson. Even as the snow continues to fall, signs of spring are in the air in the greater Yellowstone ecosystem. Days are getting longer, the bears are waking from their long winter's nap, and the migratory birds are coming back for the summer. We've seen the robins, grosbeaks, red-winged blackbirds, mountain bluebirds, and the geese are passing overhead in ever-increasing numbers. One of my favorite birds, though, is the sandhill crane. They're huge. You can see them as they pass by high overhead on their way back from the southern U.S. and northern Mexico, and you can definitely hear them. That call can be heard over two miles away, which makes them pretty hard to miss, especially during mating season. What you're listening to there is called a unison call. It's a duet between a male and a female. Oh, I thought, yeah, it's, let's get together. That's the type of unison call. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's exactly what that is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, these, these birds are over four feet tall. They're as big as a great blue heron, but even bulkier. They can weigh over 10 pounds Ooh. and a wingspan like yours, about six feet. Oh, geez. Here's a piece of trivia for you. Do you know what a baby sandhill crane is called? Uh, a craney and trainee? <laughs> <laughs> it's called a colt. A colt? A colt, because they have long legs and they awkwardly prance around. I guess that'd be true. Um, they have to grow up fast. There's a lot of predators around here that'll happily eat a baby crane. Oh, so I bet so. They're born covered in down with their eyes open, and they're out of the nest and walking around in a day. Mm, okay. And they'll, they'll be able to migrate down to Mexico this fall. And mm -hmm. we, have, we have two of them at the Yellowstone Wildlife Sanctuary. And I'm sure they've got names, don't they? Well, one of them is Big Bird, and the Big other Bird. one is Niles. <laughs> Niles Crane. And the Niles. It sounds like some sort of a butler to Big Bird, I'm thinking. <laughs> An old Niles Crane. Oh, I see. Okay, there we go. There now we go. I got see it. that. I see that now. Mm -hmm. Yep. Right now, in fact, we're, uh, we're doing a capital campaign. Our migratory birds like the Sandhill Cranes, the vultures, uh, they're not used to spending these harsh... Montana winters here. They're, no, they're uh -uh. used to heading down south. They'd probably like to pack their bags and move on into Arizona. So we have to keep them indoors and take them off display in the winter, but we're uh, putting together some money for a brand new enclosure that's going to give them a heated indoor area so they can get in and out whenever they choose. Hmm. Okay. Also going to have a pond and a waterfall for the St. Hill Cranes because <laughs> they nest in marshes and beaver ponds. I see. Okay. So uh, if we were interested in... Uh, uh, of course, uh, donating some money to this. How would we go about that? Well, you could call the sanctuary at 446-1133. You can come up and visit. We're up off 2nd Street in Red Lodge. Or you can visit YellowstoneWildlifeSanctuary.org. All righty. Sounds great. Two minutes in the Yellowstone ecosystem. Of course, we're probably a little bit more than that. But hey, it's the first time. It was the it first off. time. We're playing with the schedules here. Yeah, we'll, for sure. We'll be back at 822 next, next Wednesday. Wednesday. Right here on the mountain. Thanks for joining us for Two Minutes in the Yellowstone Ecosystem, sponsored by the Yellowstone Wildlife Sanctuary in Red Lodge, Montana. This podcast updates every Friday on iTunes, YellowstoneEcosystem.com, and the Sanctuary's website, YellowstoneWildlifeSanctuary.org. Thanks to our recording partners at FM 99 The Mountain, where you can hear this show live every Wednesday at 8.22 a.m. 
I'm your announcer, Jenny Van Oyen, and I hope you'll join me next week for another episode of Two Minutes in the Yellowstone Ecosystem. At the time we started, I was running the education department here at the Yellowstone Wildlife Sanctuary, and I was able to keep the podcast on a weekly schedule. That November, I was promoted to executive director, and the podcast went on hiatus as other duties took up my time. A year later, I decided it was time to bring it back. Most episodes of Two Minutes in the Yellowstone Ecosystem ran about three or four minutes. Whatever happened to truth in advertising? It was a great way to cover a couple of high points of a topic and exchange some hopefully witty banter with the DJ, Les King, but there's not enough time to really cover a subject with that format. So we flushed the last couple of episodes out of the pipeline, renamed the podcast Greater Yellowstone Ecosystem, and started recording new episodes, freed of the restrictions of the radio time slot. Then 2020 hit. Need I say more? After only three long-form episodes, we went on hiatus again. Now, with our feet back under us, the staff healthy, and our winter slow season once again upon us, we relaunch again. We named this podcast after the Greater Yellowstone Ecosystem. It would probably behoove us to explain exactly what the Greater Yellowstone Ecosystem is and why we care about it. To do so, here is Episode 5 of Two Minutes which explains it all. Welcome to Two Minutes in the Yellowstone Ecosystem, sponsored by the Yellowstone Wildlife Sanctuary. Now here's your host, Gary Robson. Last month, we've been talking about the greater Yellowstone Ecosystem. So what are we going to be talking about today? Well, I figure after talking about it for a month, I might explain what it actually is. And so what is the Yellowstone (laughs) Ecosystem? You know, Yellowstone National Park is big. It's huge. It's definitely big. It's over 2.2 million acres. It's a lot bigger than a lot of states. Yes, it is. Mm -hmm. And when they drew the boundaries of that park, do you know what they drew them for? Keep all the geysers in, I'd say. That's exactly what they wanted to do. The Yellowstone National Park is home to roughly half the active geysers on the planet Earth. Okay. So when they drew the boundaries of the park in 1872, their goal was to keep all the geothermal features in this protected area. So they wanted to get all the geysers, the fumaroles, the hot springs, the mud spots, everything. I'm a good guesser. Pots, yes. <laughs> but at that time, they weren't thinking about ecosystems. Mm-hmm. They were specifically thinking about those geothermal geysers, features. Yes. So now we have a new concept today of not just Yellowstone National Park, but an ecosystem that doesn't stop at the borders of the park. The Greater Yellowstone Ecosystem is about 10 times the size of Yellowstone itself, and it includes two national parks, most of five national forests, the Absorca Beartooth Wilderness, which is a million acres itself, part of the Wind River Reservation, three national wildlife refuges, and well over a million acres of BLM land. So it's roughly defined by lands that make good grizzly bear habitat. Oh, okay. Uh, Even though there aren't grizzly bears in all of it, that's pretty much what it is. It covers the the Rocky Mountains through vast chunks of Montana, Wyoming, and Idaho. A lot lot of the West. And you talked about Yellowstone Park being bigger than some of our states. Yes. Greater Yellowstone Ecosystem is 22 million acres, and that's bigger than 10 out of our 50 states, just slightly smaller than South Carolina. Oh, That is huge, and of course, uh, encompassing all that and protecting all that is a big job. It is indeed, and it's pretty much the last really big ecosystem in the temperate zones. We'll we'll ignore the equatorial rainforests Mm -hmm. in the Arctic and Antarctic here for a minute, that has basically the same plants and animals it had before people got here. So they, they refer to it as a nearly intact ecosystem. And uh, it's home to the largest concentration of wildlife, especially what they call the megafauna, the the big critters like bison and grizzly and moose and elk uh, in the lower 48 states. And these animals are what the Yellowstone ecosystem is all about. And it's also what the Yellowstone Wildlife Sanctuary is all about, providing lifelong sanctuary to non-releasable wildlife from this ecosystem while sharing a message of education and conservation. Well, sounds awesome. Well, Gary, always entertaining, always informative. Thanks for joining us for Two Minutes in the Yellowstone Ecosystem, sponsored by the Yellowstone Wildlife Sanctuary in Red Lodge, Montana. 
This podcast updates every Friday on iTunes, YellowstoneEcosystem.com, and the Sanctuary's website, YellowstoneWildlifeSanctuary.org. Thanks to our recording partners at FM 99 The Mountain, where you can hear this show live every Wednesday at 822 a.m. I'm your announcer, Jenny Van Oyen, and I hope you'll join me next week for another episode of Two Minutes in the Yellowstone Ecosystem. We were hoping that our listeners would appreciate us moving away from the short format and covering topics in more depth, and it looks like you did. Our two most downloaded episodes are both long-form podcasts. The top episode, How Animals End Up in Sanctuaries, is 43 minutes long. In that one, I talk with Laurie Wolf, Acting Education Bureau Chief for Montana Fish, Wildlife, and Parks, and Courtney Long, the Education Manager here at the Yellowstone Wildlife Sanctuary, about the role of rehabilitation centers and wildlife sanctuaries. The second most downloaded episode, Wolves, is about 21 minutes. That one is particularly timely right now, as the federal government delisted gray wolves yesterday, a move that conservation groups are widely criticizing. Bart Melton, the Wildlife Program Director for the National Parks Conservation Association, said that, quote, removing protections for gray wolves amid a global extinction crisis is short-sighted and dangerous to America's conservation legacy. I have to say that I agree with him. What does this podcast talk about? Mostly animals. We've covered the mammals of this ecosystem in depth. Bears. Bobcats. Lynxes. Porcupines. Coyotes. Foxes. Lagomorphs. Wolverines. Mountain lions. Bats. And more. We've also covered birds like cranes. Swainson's hawks. Vultures, eagles, owls, ravens, turkeys, and red-tailed hawks. Two episodes that were immediate hits were on rattlesnakes of the greater Yellowstone ecosystem and the now-extinct North American cheetah that roamed these plains as recently as 10,000 years ago. But it's not just about the animal species. We've discussed wildlife safety, why you shouldn't feed wildlife, behavioral enrichment, migration, animal names, and trophic cascades, how animals can change their own environment. We've also delved into diseases that affect both our local animals and potentially ourselves, including chronic wasting disease, rabies, and West Nile virus. We're always open to ideas for new subject matter, and we're definitely open to taking some of the subjects we hit briefly in our old two minutes format and covering them again in greater depth. If you have ideas about topics for future episodes or questions about past episodes, email me podcast at yellowstonewildlife.org or leave a text or voicemail at 406 426 1210. Your comments may end up in our next episode. Where can you listen to the Greater Yellowstone Ecosystem Podcast? Well, the main podcast site is yellowstoneecosystem.com. All of our past episodes are archived there. Video crossovers and special features like this one can be found on our YouTube channel, Yellowstone Wildlife Sanctuary, along with behind-the-scenes videos, news updates, experience our wild educational videos, and more. The best place to see what's going on with the Wildlife Sanctuary is our website, YellowstoneWildlifeSanctuary.org. I hope you'll stop by there and look at ways to support the sanctuary through donations, membership, animal adoptions, or shopping our online store. The sanctuary is not affiliated with Yellowstone National Park and receives no funding from the Park Service. Most of our funding comes from grants and donations. It is a 501c3 nonprofit, so all of your donations are tax deductible. This episode of Greater Yellowstone Ecosystem was recorded at the Yellowstone Wildlife Sanctuary in Red Lodge, Montana. Our theme music was written and performed by Justin Satterfield and recorded by Sean Keeney. For our full archive, please visit yellowstoneecosystem.com or subscribe wherever you listen to your podcasts. And please subscribe to the Yellowstone Wildlife Sanctuary YouTube channel for more video crossover episodes. I'm your host, Gary Robson, and I hope you'll be joining us for more episodes of Yellowstone Ecosystem.